Okay, so I'd like to sh take a quick romp around the bend with the Laplacian. Um, so I want to show that given a um, potential, um, we can find the uh, charge distribution. Okay, so we want, we're want we going to be given a potential, a um, fairly simple looking potential of phi of x. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, x, the vector um, that's only dependent on one um, set of coordinates. Uh, that's going to look something like this. A, R, or well, we should use a phi naught. So let's use a phi naught. R, X over X squared plus B squared. So this phi naught has the same units as um, phi and R is some sort of range. Um, so we have have something that looks like this as our potential and using the Laplacian we are going to find or find the um, charge distribution. Okay, now again we've just got a function. We're not really sure exactly what it looks like until we plot it, right? Um, now this is actually a fairly common sort of plot. So I mean, if you've been if you've been doing a lot of work um, in physics or engineering, you probably actually already know what this looks like. Um, but most of the people who were watching this video, being my students, probably haven't done um, several years of work uh, for for this. So let's see what we get. Um, so uh, let's see, x is small, we have sort of a linear function like this, right? And if x is large, we have basically um, 1 over x. So we have a function that's going to look something like that, right? So it comes up, there's going to be some peak here. Ideally, we'd find that peak. I don't think I'll do that today. Um, but ideally, we'd find what this number here was, where exactly that was, and relate it to this parameter b. Um, so that's more or less what we look like. And we're going to see where the charges are on that. So we can see a couple of different possibilities here um, right off the bat. We know that you know having something changing like this usually indicates that there's some charge there. Uh, it's harder to tell out here, um, but it is going as 1 over r, so maybe that's, maybe there'll be charges there, maybe there won't, we'll have to see, right? So, um, so our concept here is the Poisson, Poisson equation. And that's going to look like, for our purposes today, rho is equal to minus epsilon naught times the Laplacian of phi. Okay. So that's where we get our Laplacian. We're ready to go. We're going to have a good time. All right. So let's have a good time. <laughs> okay. So we're having a good time. Um, this is, again, uh, just like the last video, something that's very, very straightforward. A lot of the things we're going to be doing at the end here of electrostatics um, or of uh, electrostatics and free space is really going to be, um, be this very simple stuff. Uh, the same thing will be true of the next, the next unit or the next, chat, the next section, which will, which will be the curl. Um, so we've got Poisson's equation. Uh, all we really have to do is substitute. We don't have anything else to do, so let's just go directly to an answer, right? So we're saying that the rho is equal to minus epsilon naught del squared phi. And um, that del squared, as we, we like to remember, is just um, d, d squared dx squared plus d squared dy squared, the sum of the partial derivatives in all three directions, sum of the second partial second derivative, blah, blah, blahs. Um, and then phi is phi naught times r over times x over x squared plus 
B squared, these two guys, they're constants, so they're going to come out. These two guys, there's, there's no Y or Z dependence, so they disappear. So that means we end up with something like minus epsilon naught. Um, well, let's keep on going. Let's go vertically instead of horizontally. Um, equals minus epsilon naught um, d squared dx or dx squared. Uh, actually, let's put the pi naught r out here because we can get away with that. d squared dx squared x over x squared plus b squared. Okay. So this is a chain rule right away, right? So that means we have minus epsilon naught phi naught um, r times ddx, right? Um, 1 over x squared plus b squared d, 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 x, dx dx. That's just going to be 1 um, plus x d, d, x 1 over x squared plus b squared. Um, and we got all our stuff out in the front again. Um, this again was just 1, so we have 1 over x squared plus b squared, not a huge thing. Uh, then we have this this guy here that's um, going to give us a minus x squared plus b squared squared um, times x. And we still have a little bit of ddx left in that. Uh, so we've got our product rule, now we've got our chain rule. Um, we've got a little bit left here. We have to take the derivative of x squared plus b squared. That's just going to be 2x, right? So we have equals minus epsilon naught phi naught r. Um, you know, I've dropped the ddx by mistake. So let's go ahead with that. Uh, 1 over x squared plus b squared. Um, you know, we said that's 2x, so minus 2x squared, x squared plus b squared. Uh, this is an excellent thing to combine because this is squared, so we have an x squared plus b squared over here as well. So this is all equal to the x squared plus b squared like that. So we're going to be able to subtract this. We'll have b squared minus x squared over x squared plus b squared squared. So that's minus epsilon naught phi naught r d dx b squared minus x squared over x squared plus b squared squared. Um, so where do we end up with now? We have minus epsilon naught phi naught r. Um, and again, product rule, so um, 1 over x squared plus b squared squared plus, or times, excuse me, uh, ddx times b squared minus x squared um, plus b squared minus x squared ddx 1 over x squared plus b squared squared. Um, so we're cruising along. We're doing pretty good. Uh, let's see. Now, one of my students has said that I sound like I'm doing this right before I go to bed. It is 11 o'clock. And I am going to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, so yes, I'm afraid that when I do this, I am just a little bit tired, but we'll have to just deal with that, right? I mean, this is extra stuff, so um, please don't get too annoyed if it's not, you know, if the production quality isn't up to your, isn't up to your liking. Um, okay, so actually the numerator in this part is going to be the derivative of this with respect to x, which is minus 2x. Um, 
So we have minus 2x sitting there. Um, and then we have our plus um, b squared minus x squared. Right? And we're going to multiply that by 2 because we're going to send that downward, but we get a negative here because this is a, it's actually a minus 2 because this is a x squared plus b squared to the minus 2. So this is x squared plus b squared to the minus 3. And we still have left over um, the ddx x squared plus b squared as we did before. And that gives us uh, minus epsilon naught phi naught r. Um, and actually, as far as I can tell, this is minus 2, the derivative here is minus 2x, so we've got a minus 2x we can bring out in front. Um, and then if we want to bring out the x squared plus b squared cubed, we can do that as well. Um, that just means instead of 1 there, we have an x squared plus b squared, then we have a plus b squared minus x squared. So we are there, we are finally there. We've got this uh, minus epsilon naught phi naught r. Oops, we, we've got a two, we've actually got a four there because we've got this guy and this guy. So, and then we've got a minus sign. So I should be taking care of those things as I go, right? So I have four epsilon naught phi naught. Um, and then we have x and r are out here, so we'll just make this a bunch of things with units of meters, with dimensions of length. And we have x squared plus b squared cubed. And that is more or less what our um, charge distribution looks like, which looks a lot like this guy, only more so, right? So. Um, actually, I think these, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to do it this time, but I think these peaks are going to be at a slightly different location, um, and they're definitely going to drop faster. It, okay, same sign. We ended up with the same sign. So, wow. Okay. That's a little too steep, but that's okay. So we get something like that, steeper, um, slightly different position for these guys, for these peaks. And that is um, basically the charge distribution using Poisson's equation from a potential. I will see you next time. Bye now.